the domain of space, heaven and earth are in agreement. Therefore, the facts of reality are intelligible because they express a heavenly identity. However, time pulls heaven and earth apart, causing the facts of material reality to no longer express a spiritual truth. This facilitates change because material reality needs to transform to be reunited to spiritual truth. This is explained in Ecclesiastes, which reads, Vanity of vanities, the whole is vanity. One generation passes and another generation comes. Whatever has been shall be, and whatever was done shall be redone. In the local sense, time causes an identity to change into something else. However, in a global sense, change reaches its limit when an identity becomes its opposite. Therefore, through negation, time creates an inversion of identity, but when reiterated upon itself, a negation of negation creates a cyclical pattern, reverting back to the starting point. For example, the negative of negative 1 is positive 1. Therefore, the patterns of reality are constantly repeating themselves throughout the cycles of history. In stark contrast to this pattern, Genesis describes the fundamental pattern of space, reading, let there be an expanse between the waters, and let it separate water from water. Let the earth grow a seeding herb and a tree producing fruit with its seed in it according to its kind. In this case, dry land is inhabited by the primary symbol of spatial reality, the tree. The tree is based on a singular principle, a seed, and expresses itself with reason and purpose by producing fruit with its seed in it according to its kind. Therefore, the implications and ramifications, the fruits, are consistent with the first principle, the seed. The pattern of space is a process of accumulation, causing more and more trees to grow and fill the earth. For this reason, space is based on reason and purpose. It is directional and logical, and it is aimed at a positive end, which is an extension of its own identity. This extension happens when the pattern of space integrates and orders the continuous potentiality of time into discrete categories. On the other hand, the pattern of time is based on absurdity and irony. It is a destructive and recreative pattern that ultimately accomplishes nothing other than a grand contradiction. It expresses itself as a circular argument, where nothing amounts to anything, as it is based on vanity, or not. The, the cycle of time is, is, is described in Ecclesiastes, which reads, There is a season and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to destroy and a time to rebuild. Ultimately, the patterns of space and time are mediators of knowledge that are synonymous with reason and absurdity. Space is consistent because it always produces according to its kind, whereas time is absurd because it turns in on itself. Interestingly enough, in computer science, a tree is a data structure with no loops or inversions, and a cycle is a data structure with no branches. Moreover, the data structures of cycles and trees consist of computer code made by zero and one. Zero is a symbol of time because it expresses a concept of not as it restarts a digital cycle. On the other hand, one is a clear identity which is a symbol of space. Incredibly, the patterns of reality described in Genesis are at the basis of computer science. Furthermore, space and time are also symbols of the influence of rationality and irrationality, straight and crooked, and efficiency and wastefulness. To illustrate this, consider traveling as an example of work. It expresses a point or destination with a series of steps. Traveling straight indicates a trajectory based entirely on the destination, whereas crooked traveling means there was wasted work, as the journey was negatively influenced by obstacle stones. The crooked path can be separated or broken into two vector components, one part that expresses a positive principle and is characterized by reason and efficiency, whereas the other expresses a negative principle characterized by wastefulness and pointlessness. The opposite of straight is cyclical, because the entire path is wasted away and based on pointlessness, it ends where it started. Ironically, we refer to somebody as straight if their sexual orientation is directed towards the positive reproduction of the species. Moreover, students are symbolically instructed to keep concepts they learn straight and not to get things twisted or mixed up. In addition to traveling, counting and measuring are also basic examples of work that impose category, meaning, and definition on the natural world by integrating raw quantity into discrete and rational patterns. Therefore, the ability to mark, count, and measure things is associated with human work, rationality, and logic in the domain of space. This is symbolized through the number six, which symbolizes six days of work, the six square faces on a cube, and the six directions of space. It represents rationality, 
work, and reason. Moreover, our time system is based on the number six. Six days of a week, 60 seconds in a minute, 60 minutes in an hour, etc., etc. On the other hand, the number seven symbolizes completeness, as it integrates the six days of work into itself, as well as an ambiguous remainder, the seventh day of rest that is left uncounted. The full symbolism of the number seven can be understood in the context of the inability to correctly measure a cycle with its radius, which yields a measurement of six radius and a little bit more. This is because the circumference of a circle is equal to two times pi times r. Pi is 3.14 and some remainder, so two times that is six and some remainder times the radius. Therefore, in this case, six radius and irrational remainder make up a circle. The irrational number can never be fully subsumed by the square patterns of reason and space because it goes on indefinitely, escaping the rational quantification of human number systems. In this case, the pattern of an irrational number is unknown, and it is defined only through negation of pattern itself. In other words, the only pattern of pi is that it has no discernible pattern. As discussed in previous videos, Space is associated with discrete categories and time with continuity or fluidity. Therefore, the symbol is a circle of time because the only way to obtain the circumference of the circle is to leave the seventh part as irrational. Trying to comprehend the circumference of a circle is folly, for there are more digits in the number pi than there are atoms in the universe. Therefore, the number seven symbolizes the irrational period of the cycle when the end transforms into the beginning. This type of inversion is forbidden by the law of space during periods of work and productivity. However, during the final stage, space loses its grip on reality and reality returns to a primitive condition. This return to irrationality is symbolized on the cosmic scale by floods and on the human scale by carnivals, sabbaths, and jubilees. The holiness of this irrational period is commented on Ecclesiastes, which reads, Better is the end of a thing than its beginning. Moreover, the numbers 6 and 7 have important implications throughout the Bible. In the Bible, 666 refers to the process of attempting to number, reason about, intellectually comprehend, and even order all aspects of reality, even that which cannot be comprehended. Ultimately, this is warned against in the book of Job, which reads, The Lord does great, incomprehensible, and marvelous things without number. He causes rain on the earth and sends water on all the places under heaven. He frustrates the counsels of logical men, so their technology cannot carry out their plans. He catches the wise in their craftiness and it subverts the counsel of the cunning. In this case, God is described as the author of the uncountable, innumerable, and ir irrational floodwaters. Furthermore, God will not hesitate to use the influence of time to subvert those who attempt to dethrone him through constant work and failure to worship, sing, dance, and praise his name. Ultimately, since God is defined apophatically, Human reason cannot comprehend God because the logical system cannot contain its negation, as proved by Cantor's diagonalization and expounded upon by Godel's incompleteness theorems. Although human reason and work is a positive process, the sin of pride, like Satan's fall from heaven, is a sin whereby man makes his own reason his God. Ultimately, the limitations of reason have already been proven. Reason cannot include negation. Since all humans die, life necessarily exists as negation. Therefore, attempting to explain life through pure reason or scientific means is ultimately futile because life ends in death, and by definition, reason cannot comprehend death. Despite this, around the time of the scientific revolution, Descartes was visited by a spirit who instructed him, Nature is to be conquered by number and measure. Since that time, Western civilization has abandoned God instead defining itself by its own ability to think, as stated by Descartes, I think, therefore I am. However, the most recent developments in computer science, for example Turing's halting problem, have shown the limitations of logical systems and clearly established a bound past which reason cannot extend. As reason is based solely on a purpose encoded into algorithms, it can be encoded into algorithms and deterministic programs can compute it within the limitations of time. However, some problems which exist are based on negation of logic. In other words, some problems are based on anti-pattern, and therefore the solution is not solvable through the confines of a logical algorithm. This type of problem is classified as intractable, and is called NP, or non-polynomial time solvable. However, if the solution to an intractable problem is given, 
It can be confirmed to be true using logic. This has important implications for the relationship between revelation and computation. Solutions to NP problems can only be directly perceived through brute force, then proven to be true through logic. This is why in prayer, God can only be approached apophatically or through negation. The process of hesychasm or stillness is aimed at the succession of thought, concept, or rational conception, since God cannot be understood through those means. Moreover, holiness is therefore the process of sharpening attention or becoming more aware of one's own thoughts and perceptions, since solutions to intractable problems can only be perceived and rationality itself is based on perceived presuppositions, it is the case that rationality is therefore inferior to perception. Hence, where science has shown its limit, symbolism takes up its helm. Because only symbolism can encode a fractal model of itself within itself, and even include its own negation. Although in some vague theoretical sense, deterministic narratives about creation are true, creation is ultimately not deterministic and randomness exists as a part of the universe. Therefore, only a non-deterministic or symbolic narrative about creation can explain all of reality, both the deterministic and non-deterministic aspects. Ultimately, an attempt to describe all of reality in rational and logical terms, to square the circle of reality, or to fit everything within a number system is the process of 666. To fully understand this, consider how marking things comes from the story of Cain and Abel. Because Cain killed Abel, he was disconnected from higher spiritual truth and therefore needed to supplement his being. The mark of Cain is the beginning of technology, because to mark something is to impose discrete identity. It is a precursor to counting, technology, and computation. In Revelation, it is foretold that a system will emerge requiring all to be marked, everything to be quantified, and for no remainders to exist. This has important ramifications regarding the Turing test and the so-called singularity. The Turing test is a test of a machine's ability to exhibit intelligent behavior equivalent to or indistinguishable from that of a human. The test states that if a human cannot tell the difference between a conversation with a human and a computer, or another human, then the computer possesses human intelligence. This test can be most easily passed by changing humans' perceptions of other humans, by making humans more and more like cyborgs. The Turing test and the singularity are described in the famous passage of Revelation, which reads, It deceived the inhabitants of earth with the signs it was allowed to perform. It was then permitted to breathe life into the beast image so that the beast could speak and could have anyone who did not worship it put to death. It forced all the people, small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to be given a stamped image on their right hands or their foreheads so that no one could buy or sell except one who had the stamped image of the beast's name or the number that stood for its name. Wisdom is needed here. One who understands can calculate the number of the beast, for it is a number that stands for a person. His number is 666. Moving on, as the god of space, the Lord directly revealed his identity to Mount, on Mount Horeb. Therefore, I am what I am is a seed-like principle of all of Mosaic law, and the metaphysical principle of space on the cosmic level. As discussed earlier, it establishes a pattern. I am in deed, fact, or earth, what I am in word, theory, or heaven. It expresses the pattern of a tree by creating a fractal geometric stability through the layers of reality and characterizes all things true, straight, and correct. On the other hand, I am what I am not is the principle of time or flooded earth. It means that heaven and earth are in disagreement and therefore change or transformation is needed. It characterizes all things crooked, false, and wrong. Yet, in order for the identity of God to encompass all of reality, God must also be the creator of chaos, the lord of potentiality, irrationality, and time. The identity of God as a divine contradiction is clearly stated in Genesis, where we read, God regretted making human on the earth, and it grieved his heart. I will blot out the human that I have created from the face of the earth. Behold, I bring the floodwaters to destroy all flesh. In this shocking case, flooding is a negative expression or retraction of God's identity. Because he destroys or subtracts what he has already created, why did God create the earth if only to destroy it? Ultimately, the flood expresses divine contradiction on the part of God, especially if his identity is understood as omniscient. Even if the flood is the result of humanity's free will, God is still the creator of human beings and free will, and is therefore still the author of both dry land and the flood. This paradox is commented on in Ecclesiastes, which instructs us, Consider the work of God. Who can make straight what God has made crooked? On a good day, enjoy good things, and on an evil day, consider both one and the other God has made, so that no one may find the least fault with him. 
In this case, the author tells us that God created all things, including humanity, free will, and its implications. He created good directly and evil indirectly, as a byproduct or remainder. Therefore, man should not attempt to use his feeble logic and reasoning to construct a God in his, who is in his own image. Rather, man must realize that God is the creator of evil, sin, and death, and therefore even these aspects of creation are working for God. Rather than fight it or argue with God, these events must be subsumed into higher truths. For it is written, Sorrow is better than laughter. When the face is sad, the heart grows wise. In a strange and mysterious way, negative events and sins are often considered good things in the Bible, especially in the case where two wrongs make a right. For if Jesus had not been crucified, he could not have arisen. And if Peter did not deny Christ, he would not have been able to lead with humility. And if Paul had not once persecuted God, he would have not realized the limitations and folly of human intelligence, declaring himself a fool for Christ. Therefore, pride convinces us of our own self-sufficiency and logical omniscience and leads to our own fracturing and death like the crumbling of the Tower of Babel. Instead, we should seek, in humility, to come to recognize the Logos in all aspects of creation. As stated again in Ecclesiastes, Just as you do not know how the life breath enters the human frame in the mother's womb, so you do not know the work of God, who is working in everything. Ultimately, in order for something to be logical and consistent for humans, it must be incomplete because it must expel remainders. Therefore, if something is complete, it is incomprehensible and contradictory, since it contains a mixture of opposites within it. Thank you for your attention to this video. If you found it helpful, please like, share, and subscribe. There is no substitute for reading language of creation. Please buy it and read it on your own. The link is in the description below. Also, feel free to comment with any questions or insights or spots where I made a mistake. And feel free to direct message me on Twitter as well.